Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be um, trying something um, I got a question in the comments if it was possible to take out drives from a uh, broken server and put them in a good server and I thought oh, that's a good video idea so I've actually gone ahead and I have this server up here I have put in three drives in that and configured that in a RAID 5 and I have installed ESXi 6.7 on those um, so it should be simple for us to try and move those drives from up here and to this server down here which is right now turned off what do we do well first we simulate that this server has uh, broken down we just turn it off then we take the drive out and then we put them in the server beneath it and power it up and then we have to go into the RAID controller and import that uh, array of drives so that it knows that it has those drives and it knows that it's supposed to be using those drives so that's um, what we are up to let's um, let's have a look at the monitor here okay so here is the monitor I have installed the newest version of VMware on it ESXi 6.7.0 uh, on this server which I actually got from a subscriber Jesper I picked these up in Copenhagen last year and uh, they have two Intel Xeon E5620s these are 2.4 GHz processors and it has 96 GB of memory awesome so the server oh we can see the server it's the awesome IBM slash Lenovo system x3650 M3 they're up here so this one is the one with the drives they are over here these are three 300 gigabyte SAS drives that I put in there down here in the other server it has a normal boot drive we're gonna be taking that out and see what it uh, what it says about that I did also take a normal boot drive out of the top one that's that's on the NAS down here it's gonna go back in when we're done with this so um, let's power this off and uh, move the drives down the rate controller in these servers is the server rate 5014 and I hope it's the same one in both of them we'll gonna we'll find that out I do believe that it would be possible to take the drives from two different rate controllers but well let's not jinx it let's try something that will hopefully work so we're just gonna simulate that this breaks down so we can I haven't installed any virtual machines on it I didn't think that would be necessary if I can move the disk over to the other server and they will actually start up and start VMware I think we have a success it will probably you can see here that it has gotten an IP number number 16 so that it got that from DHTP when it uh, goes over in the new server a uh, the new server will have a new MAC address on the network card so it will probably get a new IP number so if this was something that I needed to do because um, the server was in production I would then have to go in and reconfigure the IP number maybe on the DHP server maybe on the host itself really doesn't matter if it's the one or the other as long as it gets done both the servers are now blinking which means they're both powered but they're not powered on so let's um oh, come on let's remove this drive there that's the old drive it doesn't matter for this and we're gonna take out these flutters and we'll move the drives down we could just have a look at it um, yeah these are actually IBM System X drives 300 gigabyte drives 10,000 RPMs 6 gigabit transfer rate something so yes I did hear that one of them was um, not in the best condition it was making weird noises so now they're in this server instead 
So let's go around the back. I need to move the monitor and the keyboard down to this one. So here we are around the back. I just need to move the, the keyboard and the monitor. Uh, one. I have a bad connection in this power supply. That's really weird. I think we'll take this out. I do believe I have another one. Let's put that one in instead. Anything? Yeah. Weird stuff. And it lights up orange here. I'm hoping that will go out and just, yeah, there it recognize good power again. I don't know why it does that. It sounds like a bad connection. Not really easy to fix that. Okay, around the front again. So let's boot this and I need a mouse. I had this mouse down in my keyboard here and I didn't know. It works for everything but uh, configuring the rate controller. As soon as I try to do that with the rate controller it, it messes up everything. So uh, we're gonna put in an external mouse here. There. A Novo mouse. Thank you very much. Okay. Doing booting, we get this message. It has um, discovered that all the drives from the previous configuration is gone. If this is unexpected to me, like if uh, I did nothing, just powered the server, uh, it says that I should check the cable and ensure that the drives are present and stuff like that. Um, to continue, I need to press C. So I'm gonna be doing that. We get an add-on here. Um, we get to uh, enter the configuration. We just have to press Y, and and it will load that. Y, and you can see that it, it loaded this, and it is indeed the server rate M fifteen fourteen, same rate controller as in the server um, above it. So let's go in here and see if we can if we can import our configuration and. Uh, work on our new server. Let's see, we have all configurations. It has found a configuration one. Let's pick that one. And here we can preview it or we can clear it. To uh, import it, we need to preview it. So it has found my my three drives here. And it has also found that this is a RAID 5. That's correct. That was what I did. And down here, I can choose to import it. I really hope this will work. So let's import. And there we are. That's almost too simple. So now the RAID controller has imported those three drives and they're now a part of this server. We, if, if I pull these out, it will complain the next time about where did these go? Hey, stop, where did my drives go? Just like it did uh, seconds ago. Yeah, that's cool really simple i hope you saw that uh, it was so simple i should really show it twice but i don't want to mess it up i really wanted this to work let's exit here exit exit application yes and my best guess is that it will try to boot and we will let it i have no idea if it will be able to boot the first time or if it has to, if I have to, oh, it actually found a virtual drive, so it will probably try and boot from that. Yes, we are booting VMware, so it's going to be very exciting to see if it, uh, if it's uh, happy with this or if it figures out that, whoa, all my hardware changed. I don't think it will. So my VMware host here is up and running again. It even got the same IP number ending on 16. Say that I had a hundred virtual machines on these and it wasn't just some crappy old 300 gigabyte drives. My nice background disappeared. Um, let's say that it was three two terabyte drives and all my virtual machines was on there. And this was important for the company. Of course you would have a redundant solution for this or a backup, but this is how easy it would be if you like had a um, a spare machine standing around uh, waiting for this to happen. It took me like 10 minutes. This video is not going to be very long. It just 
worked. If you're in a bad situation, you don't want bad surprises. These servers are probably pretty close at a software level and stuff, but even with different software uh, for the RAID controller, this should still work. You should still be able to take the drives out and put them in another server, similar hardware. It might become difficult if you take this out of an M3 and try it over in an M2. I have not tried that. That could be another idea for another video, but for this video, replace the server. This one had died on us. We emulated that uh, bad server and moved the disk down into a good server and booted that and production was up and running again. Very important, stable and secure operations are often more important than maximum speed or something else. Um, you can often live with that it's slow, but you can't live with it being down. Yeah, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, may I just say that if you're a patron of mine, there are lots of videos for you to go see over at Patreon because I can keep track on how many of you watch those and um, well, you have many videos you haven't looked at. So um, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.